meetings are thought to be just inefficient and people are trying to get rid of them left and right. But the problem is there are very, very effective meetings and, and very good reasons why you should have meetings. Hi everyone and welcome back to the show and episode three of our Back to Basics series, setting your business up to scale successfully through developing a team. And this episode is all about the dreaded M word. The M word stands for meetings. If you ask anyone, or I guess so many people really just hate meetings and they try to get out of them, they try to skip them, they try to do other work, multitask during them. And really meetings are thought to be just inefficient and people are trying to get rid of them left and right. But the problem is there are very, very effective meetings and, and very good reasons why you should have meetings. If meetings are ran well and the whole structure of how you have meetings with your team is done well and thoughtfully, especially in the world of remote teams, they can really be the lifeblood of getting stuff done and actually can be incredibly productive and in moving things forward and just having your whole team stay aligned. You just have to know how to have them and in this episode, we're going to set you up for success and we're going to go over the six different types of meetings you should incorporate into your business. And I'm going to also talk about some of the suggested cadences of, of when and how often you should be having each type. So I've taken a lot of this information from my own experience when I've worked in businesses and with teams, as well as um, you know, lots of the information I read in the books and podcasts that I listen to. And these are the different types of businesses that we have in my business. And I hope that you find them helpful. So the first and one that I believe I've talked about quite a bit is having regular one-on-ones with your individual team members. And you, these are critical. You really have to be meeting with your team members individually, regularly. You can decide if it's bi-weekly, weekly, or monthly, depending on their role and the amount of work they're doing for your business and just how critical they are. But it's really important for you to meet with them one-on-one -on -one and know you have regularly scheduled time so that you can give feedback, request feedback, and just make sure that you're touching base with how your team is feeling so that you're not left blindsided by somebody quitting. A lot of times you'll know if somebody's unhappy, if you're meeting with them regularly and you're able to help give them development and coaching during that time. So it's so important that you have time on the calendar, especially if you want to give them feedback on something that, you know, isn't immediate, but it's like weird. If you want to just randomly put a time on somebody's calendar to like tell them something, a lot of times it can induce fear. So if you have a regular one-on-one -on -one scheduled with them, it's natural for you just to talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about during those times. So that is just one of the many reasons why one-on-ones are so critical, but especially when you're a small team, having that time dedicated is crucial. So a few things about one-on-ones. It's their time. It's your employee's time, not yours. So it should be focused on what this person needs in order to be more successful not what you need for them or to go over like a status update on where they're at to projects. So because it's their time, they set the agenda, not you. And I recommend that you do set some expectations for the agenda. So tell them, you know, what you expect of them, how you want the agenda completed. Do you want them to send it to you ahead of time so that you can read through it and prepare for it? If you do tell them that, but if you ask them to send it ahead of time, be prepared to read it ahead of time. Don't be the boss that asks for it ahead of time. And then it's clear when you show up that you haven't even looked at it. It's just rude and not, not a nice thing to do. Um, you might not care if they send it to you ahead of time, but definitely you want them to be prepared. So make sure you let them know that you want them to be prepared with an agenda, but you don't need them to send it ahead of time. And just make sure that you're doing, you're following through with the expectations that you set, I guess, is my, is my advice there. Um, it's almost probably, it's honestly better if you just have the conversation in real time, if you're not going to hold up your end of the bargain and read through things and prepare ahead of time. So the agenda should be directed by them 
And your job is to hold them accountable when they show up without anything to talk about um, or totally unprepared. That's really your job. It's not to fill the time with something to make it useful. It's just to hold space for them to talk to you about what's going on. And so I love these. So one of my favorite books, highly recommend you read, is Radical Candor by Kim Scott. And in this, in her book, she talks specifically about one-on-ones and she provides a whole list of great follow-up questions or questions that you can ask during one-on-ones to get the most out of them. Um, and you know, they, they're, they're really meant to be coaching, um, coaching questions and they show your team member that you genuinely care and want to help them. So some question prompts include asking them, what can I do or stop doing that would make this easier, work easier, this project easier, this task easier, whatever it is that you're talking about, right? Next one is what keeps you up uh, or what keeps you up or wakes you up at night about work? Um, you can also ask not about work because candidly, like work and personal life is all blending together these days, but definitely a great question to ask. Um, I don't know about you, but I've had many times in my life where I was having work dreams. And if my boss would have asked me like, what's keeping you up at night or waking you up at night, it would have relieved so much pressure because I could just tell them with it, uh, tell them about it. Another question is, what are you working on that you don't want to be working on? And then from there you can ask, is it that you don't want to work on it because you're not interested or is it because you don't think it's important? that helps them figure out the context in which they're not, you know, they, they want to answer that question versus just asking why. And then what are you not working on that you do want to work on? And you could ask, why are you not working on it? What can you do to start working on? What do you need me to do so that you can start working on it? Are all great questions to ask. A one-on-one is also a great time, or it is a time to encourage new ideas. In these meetings, your team should feel safe to talk about ideas and developmental goals. You want them to be able to brainstorm or workshop things, talk things out before they go into like full creation or de- uh, debate mode about it. I can speak from experience that nothing is worse than having a meeting with a boss or somebody else. And you just want to like float an idea by them and they just start criticizing you or asking you detailed questions you haven't thought through. As somebody who, who really learns through talking, I need the space to be like, Hey, I have this idea. I'm kind of thinking we could go about it this way. I'm just curious what your initial reaction is to it. And I had one particular co-founder or leader that I worked with who would then like ask me detailed questions that I wasn't prepared to answer. And I felt, I left feeling like, I'm super stupid. Like, I can't believe that I didn't know the answers to this, or this person thinks I'm a, like an idiot. Um, I wish I wouldn't have even brought it up. Like that is the quickest way to crush innovation and creativity on your team by doing that. So give them space to just talk things out. And then here are some times that your one-on-ones are not really going great and you've got to step up your boss game. If your direct report cancels meetings and re- very rarely has agenda topics, it's a, it's a red flag that something's not going well. It, if it's just a bunch of like regular updates that they regurgitate from their daily standups, also a red flag. If you're only hearing good stuff, that's a red flag. And if they never give you criticism during the, their one-on-one, also a red flag that you are not creating a culture of feedback and asking for feedback from your team and that they don't feel comfortable giving it to you. So those are red flags if you're doing one-on-ones and you're seeing any of these these things happen. It's a red flag that it's not going well and you should revisit how you're managing and, and, and having one-on-ones with your team. Okay, the second meeting that you should have is a daily stand-up meeting. These are super short. They literally last about five minutes and they really got their name, I believe, in the Silicon Valley because... The idea was that they are so short that everyone can just stand up for them. They meet in the break room, have a cup of coffee, and you would literally just talk about what's on the agenda for the day. Um, It's very administrative in nature. So you're going to get status updates on projects from other team members. You're going to ask for help from other team members what you need them to do for you to get stuff across the line. 
And there's really no agenda needed. It's really just what's going on for the day. What do I need help from you with? You know, all of that stuff. Um, and daily is great, but if it gets to be too much of a grind, maybe you just cut it down to every Monday. Um, and if it's really critical that, or maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can figure out what works best for your team, but especially in a world of virtual work, people feel disconnected because you can't overhear what's going on, right? Or what the person next to you is working on. Like there's so much context that you miss out on by not being in an office together that having these quick touch bases as much as possible really help to resolve problems quickly and like help so things don't escalate because you're talking about things before they're a super big problem. Um, and it also helps you as a leader assess what people think priorities are and you can help have a conversation if they need to change or, or what have you. And then another thing that is so critical about a daily standup that I think gets often overlooked, but it actually helps you with creating boundaries in the workplace. You as a leader or other team members, if you know that you're going to talk to this person within the next 24 hours, you can just keep a running list of things that you want to ask them tomorrow when you meet with them versus sending them, you know, firing off a Slack message, firing off a text message, leaving a, com a comment in a project management software, or filling up already overflowing inboxes with emails. Um, because what happens, even if you say this is not important right now, they read it and it interrupts their workflow. And it doesn't, you shouldn't be interrupting people's workflows for something that can wait, especially if you know you're going to have time on the calendar to talk to this person tomorrow. It helps with boundaries. So it's so critical to have these. Otherwise, everyone is just firing things off in different <laughs> mediums, creating a bunch of chaos. So daily standups are so critical. The third meeting is a team meeting. You can do this weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. You will figure out whatever is best for the cadence of your business, but these are critical because they're more tactical in nature. And this is where you do bigger reviews of updates to the metrics that you've already decided to track, right? A couple episodes back, we talked about setting goals, a five-year goal, a three-year goal, a one-year goal, and what's the most critical right now. These are the times in which you track those metrics that are going to help you decide, are you on track and trending in a positive way towards your annual plan and your three-year goals? Put them in a dashboard somehow, in a spreadsheet somehow, and mark them, you know, in a color code them. It's always great to see visuals. Mark them as green if they're trending in a great direction. Yellow if it's like trending on, you know, watch territory or red if it's something that needs attention or you know needs immediate action. Um, it will just help highlight, okay, these things are not going well and help the team really know where they're at. You'll also talk about what went well within the last week or two weeks or month, depending on your cadence, what, what went well, what went poorly, and then why each of those, you know, why it went poorly, why it went well, so that you can course correct things in real time. And so you're going to do that at the beginning of the, the team meeting, um, probably what, 10, 15 minutes. And then once that's done, set a agenda in real time. Don't have everybody send stuff ahead of time. One, nobody reads them ahead of time, let's be honest. And two, you might end up spending the most attention on whoever lobbied the most to have their update talked about. So have the agenda set in real time. So give everyone who's in the meeting five minutes to write down some little snippets or things that you want to discuss. Um, so three to five things that either they or their team did in the last two weeks that everybody should know about and write them in a shared document and then give everybody who's in the meeting five minutes to read over what everybody wrote, make sure nobody's having side converse about it discuss things that need to be discussed from that, but sometimes just everybody reading it for 10 minutes, you're like, okay, good. Um, you know, you can ask clarifying questions or give additional color if needed, but sometimes just reading it all together is all you really need. And then save the last 20 to 30 minutes of this team meeting for key decisions that need to be made or things that need to be debated 
Think about one or two important things your team needs to take on during that week or that month and find, uh, and then have a discussion around them. You might find that some topics like need their own meeting. Um, they need a separate decision or debate meeting about them. And I loved this com- concept when I read it in Kim Scott's book, um, Radical Candor. We tried to implement this at one of the clients I worked for, uh, or I guess I was not a client. I was a full-time employee. Um, and it really, it was, it was hard to implement with a big group of people who aren't used to it. And that's where you as a small business owner have an advantage when you only have three to five people, it is easy to set these things up, which is super exciting. And so in that team meeting, you're going to be like, okay, this topic needs to have a debate about. So who needs to be involved in that conversation? And you schedule it, you set up an agenda and you schedule it right in that meeting for, you know, later that week or the following week. Same with, Hey, this thing, we have to make a decision on it. Let's go ahead and schedule this meeting. Here's who needs to be on it. And here's the agenda. And you can schedule it right in there in that team meeting to keep things moving along. So then the fourth and the fifth are actually describing, you know, the, what a debate meeting is and what a decision meeting is. And so a debate meeting is really a meeting for discussion and debating. And everybody should know that you're not going to make a decision at the end of it. It's where it, it, that's how you like reduce tension and stress and friction. It allows everybody to show up with thoughts about this topic and to discuss it. Um, and also make sure that you're not jumping in deci- into a decision before you've really considered everything. And it also just helps foster a lar- a, a more of a larger culture of feedback and discussion within a team. And that's really what you need on your team. People who are willing and feel safe to talk about opinions, share opinions, have their idea changed, and heaven forbid, maybe the person changes their idea based on new information. That is how great stuff, great things happen, right? And that's having debate meetings is how you can really make that happen. So make sure that the team knows what that the goal is to work together to come up with the best solution to the problem or initiative that you're talking about. Make sure that you send the agenda ahead of time and ask each person to come to the meeting prepared to discuss ideas and their thoughts about the specific topic. So you could literally like label the meeting, debate new branding or CRM tool debate. Like that's what the name of the the meeting can be on calendars. Um, And then of course, sending the agenda ahead of time. And then the fifth is the decision meeting. And a lot of times these follow a debate meeting um, and we'll have the same people involved because those people were a part of the, the initial discussion about the topic, right? So this is where you know you're making important decisions in this meeting. After the meeting, you will share an update on the decision to everybody who needs to know. And you can decide that maybe maybe as a as a maybe one of these topics isn't something that's super critical or that you have a strong opinion about. So you can have your team make the decision and just update you on what they decided. If you know that you're going to want to have final say, either be involved in that decision meeting or ask somebody in that meeting to send you a recap of why they made the decision they did so that you can give final approval before they move forward and before it's announced to the whole team. There's nothing worse than having your boss come back and tell you that they don't agree with something and then you have to backpedal and feel like you've lost face with your team. It's definitely the quickest way to disempower your team. So be very open with what you want final say on. And then the sixth type of meeting that you should have in your business is a quarterly offsite and annual and annual planning meetings. These are meetings where everybody gets together in real life. It's meant to help them foster a team environment. It helps them get to know each other personally, spend time together, and really just build a sense of of unity and team amongst everybody. Um, Make sure you have a chance to chat, collaborate, brainstorm, and just do fun things together. But do save some time to do some strategic planning and deep dives into how the business is doing against its goals. 
flying everyone somewhere or, you know, renting, um, you know, hotel room somewhere. Doing that, if you can, helps create space for creativity and innovation, gets people out of their day to day and puts them in typically a space to, to, to really be open and um, do things a little bit differently. An idea of a great agenda could be, you know, you have the first day just doing fun stuff, team building stuff. Um, and then the second day is planning, um, where you review the previous 90 days performance, the metrics that you've established, you review your vision and goal statements that you've created in the one pagers, and then establish what is most important for the next 90 days. And then of course, at the end of the year, you may do a little bit of a longer meeting where you do annual planning. Like what's our next year plan look like? How are we going to get there? Um, and really set up your team strategy for the following year. So those are the six different types of meetings you should be having in your business. It may seem like a lot, but once you get into the groove, you're going to see that these meetings actually save you time. It saves you time because you're not, you know, answering a bunch of questions. You're, you're solving problems in real time instead of creating more electronic chaos. So you're going to want to one, have regular one-on-ones with each team, teammate, I should say, team member. You're going to do daily standups with your team. If you have a big company, you can do this by department, but daily check-ins. You want to have a regular team meeting. You can decide the cadence. I recommend a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. You want to have debate meetings and decision meetings. And these are ad hoc. These are as things need to be done, but there's just a clear agenda for what you're doing in each and you're separating decisions from conversations and debating. And then six, you're going to want to have quarterly offsites and annual planning meetings. And that's so that you're all moving in the same direction. So this is great meeting etiquette and meeting hygiene. And I know that your team is going to be incredibly more productive if you start to implement some of these. So thanks so much for tuning in. The next episode on our Back to the Basics is all about compliance. A little bit boring, maybe, but super, super important. So I'm excited. Then we have our fifth one, which is all about the finances. So Really hope this stuff has been helpful in helping you build the foundations of your business and helping you set up your business to scale through people. Thanks for tuning in and we will chat with you soon. If you're not driving, stop and take a moment to share this episode with someone who you thought about while listening. Share it with your team to show them you're committed to their growth. Share it with a fellow business owner in your network who you know will be moved by the message. Heck, share it with your mother, your brother, your sister, or your cousin. Your support in growing the show means the world to me.